Good afternoon. This is April 27th, uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, I've changed my entire setup here a little bit so we can see whether it's easy for you to watch the videos. Um, so we're sitting at the same wheel except it's turned around so now I'm facing the water and the studio is behind me. I can give you a quick look. That's the studio behind me. And then I'm not sure if you can get a look out the window. That's maybe you can just about see it there. All right. So basically, my wheel, if this works the way I hope it's going to work, you'll be able to get a really good view from the side. Whereas before you were actually, you know, facing at it. But uh, let's see if this looks good anyway. All right. Turn us on. Oh, there we go. Well, it's like most YouTube videos, it seems, and now I'm the headless potter. Uh, spent last couple of days doing mostly garden things. But what I'm going to do is continue on with the lids and lidded jars that I showed you four of. I'll try and get another four in. So here is a one pound ball of clay. And this is basically, let's try and do a butter dish with a lid on it. So butter dish, it's kind of nice if you have a place to scrape the butter. So I'm compressing the bottom there, just running it from the side to the center, and that will hopefully avoid any S cracks later on. If you have one, you can use your finger like I was just doing. But if you've got yourself a little rubber rib, you can also use these and compress down like that. And that will actually give you a nice flat, flat area. Now, to scrape the butter, and that's B U D D E R. I come from Yorkshire in England. There you go. If you've seen my videos before, you know where I'm from now. But uh, the, we live in rural Nova Scotia. So there you go. So basically, what I've done is made a plate with a lip. So the dish is that, and there'll be a domed lid that will go over the top. And if you want to, this clay is very smooth. I've shown before this tool that I use here. You can actually compress the rims if you have to. But this clay is very smooth. You don't really need to do that. So there, oh, a little lump in there. So to get it off the wheel, sometimes I would leave these on the wheel because they're flat. So hopefully this will release easily. Yeah, there you go. Now I have calipers, which I'm now going to measure using that part of the caliper. I'll measure the, the width of that lip and be generous because it's easy to, yeah, I'm going to make that a bit bigger. It's easy to make that too tight later on because the shrinkage rates of flat pieces to vertical pieces sometimes I think is slightly different. Anyway, now we're going to make a dome to go over the top. So really compress when you're centering to make sure the clay doesn't feel ripply underneath your fingers. So 
push down, leave a half a centimeter to a centimeter at the bottom. And I'm not going to pull out too far because I'm going to make a ball, remember, which means I don't want a flat bottom there. I want it to be more of a curve. Water dribbled right on the edge so that when you push in with your outer fingers, and don't let go until you get right to the rim and compress the rim right at the rim. Dribble the water right on the rim. Push in deep again. There's going to be a knob at the very bottom there because this is an upside down lid at the moment. Alright, so you've opened it up. At this point, you really ought to give yourself this is a lid master tool, so that's the outside edge of the flange. So this bowl has to fit. Oh my god. Look at that. Perfect. First time. There you go. Perfect. My cat just moved. She the, thinks I'm calling her. Okay, so now I'm just going to basically open up the bottom area a little bit. So it's more, more volume inside there, basically. So this will be the other way up when it sits on the butter dish. So basically, just make sure it fits perfectly again, because after you moved around a bit, see it should go. This should go in there generously. Yeah, I probably turned. I probably pulled that in a little bit with that rib. So I'm going to just pull it out a touch. All the lids, lidded jars I threw. It was three days ago, I guess now, are actually in the kiln firing right now. Generous, so it doesn't touch as it goes in. Same thing, we'll get this off the wheel. Oh, actually, I think I need to... The, the water dribbles underneath a little easier if you put that groove under there. See what I'm looking at the screen a little bit, it's hard for me to see it because of the angle, but I think you can see all this real well. So that is done, that's that one piece. There we go. So, what's the next one? Okay, let's throw a jaw and we'll do a lid with a flange, and also the pot will have a bit of a flange. You can sketch out what you're doing um, before you throw, if you need that, and that's what I did. Twelve ways of making a lid. Okay, so let's get this pulled in. So we've been planting loads of vegetables. I planted a few straw flowers. Um, did I plant any other flowers? Oh, nasturtiums. I planted some of those too. You can eat nasturtium flowers and the leaves. So, so we've been planting mostly vegetables since we're wondering what the fall winter crop will be for vegetables this year with the coronavirus. I'll actually take some pictures of my garden eventually because I'm going to put all my outdoor pots on it so it'll look really pretty okay so I'm basically just making a jar and I'm going to push in a little bit in a minute there's a little lump in this ball of clay right down there there was like a hard piece of clay now so I just need a little bit of a flange Always annoying if you get a little firm piece of clay in the wall, but if you use the rib, 
you can generally get rid of it well smooth it out a bit there you go so this little rim you can put some water on it will have a lid that sits over the top what happens if you have a little firm piece of clay in there is that you're pressing on the clay and um, and your finger can't squeeze it where that firm piece is so it, it, everywhere else in the wall it will actually move up the way you want it to and then that one little hard piece won't and you can fight it which is what I just did or you can scrap it and start again sometimes it takes you longer to fight it than just to throw another piece but it depends if you think of it as a challenge which is what I guess I do there you go yep that's not too bad there's a little wobble on this because of the actual firm piece of clay in there If I'd known it was there at the beginning, I would have combed the clay up a little bit. And that might have got rid of it. So now, once again, let's make sure that looks there. Um, that's right. I don't know if I showed you this one on the last video or not. That's the size. I, uh, yeah, I think I'll take some of this off and use a smaller piece of clay here. pieces can sometimes be harder to center than bigger pieces. This is uh, clay body number 519 if anybody's interested from Pottery Supply House which is Toronto. So I'm pushing in each time to narrow the bottom and then the rim will of this piece will go right over the top of the other one. So it's kind of like it'll look a bit like an Easter egg. Now we'll measure it. Make sure the measure hasn't the calipers haven't been knocked. Oh, they're actually a little narrower than I used. When I put them down, sometimes I'll knock it. Okay, there you go. Oh, we've got to go much bigger. So it's good to check before you've gone too far because it's easier to stretch it, but it's much harder to actually narrow it again. just went just a tiny bit maybe a sixteenth of an inch too big so that's easy because you can just knock that back in like that so the rim will go inside there oh now it's a bit too narrow just barely pressed put any pressure on there that goes in now let's clean it up So yeah, that's basically going to be an Easter egg. This is the lid that will fit on top of the other piece. Dribble water around the piece. 
two ways of taking them off the wheel. You can actually, my wheel is now much more level. But the other way, when it's facing in the studio, I'm on a slope because this is a boathouse, so it's sloped towards the water. But the way I set my wheel up, it doesn't, the water doesn't drain this way, which is nicer. Because it stays where you put it. There you go, you couldn't see these, but there you go. That's the lid that goes onto that one. And this is the bottom, and that's the lid that goes on the top of that one. So let's try a bigger piece of clay again. A bit of clay left there to help it stick. Yeah, so we planted loads of greens. I got Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, red, red, uh, radicchio, radishes, <coughs> many types of lettuce, kale, and everything, and mescaline mix i mean a whole bunch i have a greenhouse so i'm putting it all in there it still went to minus two here centigrade last night so anyway uh make the pot again tonight it's supposed to go down to about zero and there's even a chance of snow flurries tomorrow 27th of april nova scotia But we're not Newfoundland. They'll get snow in June and July. It's possible. So I'm leaving a bit of thickness at the top there. This clay is that one that, if you belly it too much, it's it tends to sag real easy. So you got to be careful. And now I'm going to push in a touch. Wet it with my rib. Dribble a little water on the rim there. Take that in again. So it's very similar to what I just did. I'm trying to make that rib create that little shoulder part just there. That's just for the decoration on the piece. That little shoulder, that little double line there would be nice to paint something different when it's being fired, but there you go. So now I'm gonna make a lid. Let's get the size here. Make sure you've got no rough bits of clay on the end of your calipers either. Generously going in there so it's not too tight. I need a slightly bigger piece of that, so let's go with, tear a little bit off this one again. So 
So this is a third of a pound maybe. Not all the way down, half a centimeter to a centimeter from the bottom. Just open it up a touch. Compress that middle area in the bottom just to make sure that you're not thinning it, you're just pushing the clay from the outer edge to the center. Push in, lift up. I'm gonna push in again. This will have a knob at attached to that point at the bottom of the ball. So I'm digging my fingernail in there to create that little rim. It dries really fast when you dig your finger in like that. So I've created like a little rim now I should get myself an idea of the measurement here. Oh, I thought I've gone a little bit too big on that one. Oh, let's make, oh, did I get inside there? Yes, that's right, it was correct. So this is the bit that's got to go on the outside. And on the inside, so I've got to take it in just a touch. It gets confusing. So that has to be pushed in a little bit further. That's probably right now. So there's two measurements on this that have to be important. I'll bring the other piece in the picture in a second so you can see how what I've done. This is a slightly more complicated. Some of the what lids I showed you in the first video were really easy. These are a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's see. Okay, this measurement has to go inside of the jar that I just threw and it does. It's just going down. It's touching though, so it is tight. So if you wanted to adjust that, you could just use your tool and push in a little bit like that. That'll shrink that down in size. Perfect. Now, that edge there is going to sit on top of the rim and so it should to stop it from falling in the pot. So let's show you the two. Okay, you see it now? Bottom, top, this goes down into that and that little edge there stops it falling down inside and you got another, the other one was an Easter egg and this one is actually, you know, gonna have a, like a real lid look on it. So let's get this little guy off the wheel. Yeah, it got pretty warm up here today. It's kind of funny. I mean, we're up to about 12 degrees centigrade. So that's about 56 Fahrenheit, I guess. And tomorrow is supposed to be quite chilly. So that's three. How long are we going? 23. Not too bad. Like I said, try to keep them 15 minutes, but half an hour at the most. There's so many variations of lids, that's the trouble really. So let's see, what's this one? Oh, I see. Let's go with, I've got to throw a basic shape again. All of our clay suppliers up here in Canada are closed at the moment. They have been for six weeks now, so everybody's desperate to get clay. And I've got a little bit of 
supply left and I uh, but I'm just about out now so I just counted I've got seven boxes of this clay and then 13 boxes of the other one but I think there'll be some relaxation fairly soon and I have a lot of earthenware clay it may make me go back to using earthenware if we do get low or run out of some of the clays I used to do earthenware slip trailing 30, 40 years ago. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, so now this one is gonna go in. It's got a kind of funny rim on it here. All this fiddly stuff. So I'm gonna shape the outside in a second, but what I want to do, I can probably use the wooden rib. I was using my finger there, but I'm gonna give myself a little ledge on the inside, just like that. Oh, let's get this one first. Getting used to this new setup. And I'm going to watch the video later on to see if it actually does help you. It helps me because I'm seeing my seagulls and my pigeons right in front of me. I've had my back to them in all the other videos, which is kind of silly since I live here on the ocean. Okay. So now I'm going to measure the inside of this flange. Take him off. Yeah, it's actually starting to cloud up because we're supposed to get that rain and some snow flurries tomorrow. So it was sunny all day today. these two pieces together that I took off the other balls and I'll just do what I call wheel wedging to make sure they're joined together properly. Press hard, press down again and do that two three times. Cone up, cone down, cone up, cone down, cone up, cone down and that should be those two pieces of clay should really be sealed nicely together then. Okay, so this one's a pretty easy one. Sometimes I leave it thicker in the uh, center there to the bottom and then I, I can turn it upside down on the trimming wheel and actually keep doing this and throw that into a little knob. Although I tend to put a lot of um, animals on my pots as, as knobs, birds and whales. Perfect. How do you do that? 45 years of practice. I saw Robin Hopper do that at a workshop 30 plus years ago when I couldn't do that. And he just said experience. That's all it is. It, it, your body is trained in what you're doing um, by doing it many times. So it just gets to the point where you can just judge stuff by eye. Throw the water behind. And 
hit it off. I'll show you the lid with a jar in a sec. All right, so you've got that one that goes upside down on that one. And this one, this one goes upside down on that one. And I will make birds, whales, whatever animal I want as knobs, or maybe do some simple straightforward knobs. Actually, let me just straighten this up a little bit so you can see better. All right, there you go. So um, that's eight lidded jars, if you watch the two videos together. So, um, so have fun and do some uh, lidded jars and enjoy and make the best of lockdown which is now six weeks in. All right, thanks very much for joining us in Nova Scotia and I'll talk to you again in the next few days. Bye.